This is a Kia Soul EV, but it's not your typical electric car. It's fitted with sensors and electronics to give the car self-driving capabilities. And the catch is, it was all built by a few scrappy university students. That's him. That's the... He spelled something? Yeah. Do you actually spell something? What's beeping? The car just died. Uh-oh. It's 2024. We've been promised self-driving cars by now 10 years ago. Probably only a month away from having autonomous driving, at least for highways. Well, where is it? Instead, we get these stupid cars that get stuck in potholes. Stop down 9th Street in San Francisco. And here in Canada, we have nothing. Well, I've decided to take matters into my own hands because in this video, we're gonna be building a full-size self-driving car to show that if a clueless kid can do it, dude. is it really that hard? For this project, we need a car, we need sensors, we need compute. All of that is gonna cost us over $50,000. I can't afford that. Well, luckily, there just happens to be a design team at my school that's working on self-driving cars. Meet Autonomous, Waterloo self-driving car team. We competed in the Auto Drive Challenge back in 2017 to 2021 and even managed to secure second place overall. But in 2021, we didn't get accepted into the second four-year series of the challenge. And we found ourselves as a team without a competition. For over a year, our team ran without having any physical car. But somehow, by miracle, we got a brand new Kia car. So we're starting up all again from scratch. We have a car that has nothing fitted on it. And so now there's no more excuses. I can start filming and finally build this car. This is where our story begins. And our story starts at the garage. All right, guys, this is our Kia Soul EV. It's a 2019 version, but it's, as you can see, unmodified. We're going to be modifying it today. We got someone very special who's going to do a lot of the mechanical, electrical, uh, vehicle platform work. And so. the Kia uh, personnel told me not to do it. This is Aryan. He's a computer engineering student at Waterloo. And more importantly, he loves modifying cars during his free time. Uh -huh. And if, if we have to do it, to take it to them, but we're not going to do that. So, oh my, but you've done this before. I've done this many times. Today, our goal is to get the car to drive itself based on steering and velocity commands we send it. Now, to understand how we're going to do this, we need to understand what happens under the hood of a modern car. Cars today are all built using what are called drive-by wire systems, where the brake and throttle pedals aren't actually directly connected to the engine and car brakes. Rather, they're merely sensors to detect how much you've pressed on the pedal. Steering is a little bit more complicated. Most cars, including our Kia Soul EV, still has a mechanical linkage between the steering wheel and the steering rack, but it's electronically assisted by motors or hydraulics to make it easier to steer. In all of these cases, there are sensors that are used to measure the human input on the car. These sensors are all connected to modules called ECUs, which is what actually electronically controls the engine intakes, braking, and steering in real time. So what's happening here is we can see all of our connections for all of our driving mechanics. Under here, we have our steering control modules. So right here we have our, this is a, uh, the cable we're actually going to cut into for the steering harness. Under there we have our brake and throttle. You can't really see it right now, but there are position sensors for each of those pedals. We're going to remove those position sensors, and then we're going to cut into their cables. Aryan's idea here is actually quite simple. By cutting across the wire and sending our own signals, we're essentially faking sensor measurements and tricking the car into thinking those are physical inputs to the car. We're going to cut into these cables. Certain cables will go into our spoofing board. Yo! And then if you look at the board, there's this little guy, this is a relay. This relay is naturally closed to one end when there's no power to the board. Even right now, if we were to connect these cables to here and this to the car, the car is gonna drive normally. But the second that we give power to this board and this relay strips to the other connection, it's going to disconnect the throttle pedal and connect the board to throttle ECU. So we'll use three of the same boards, one for steering, one for acceleration, and one for braking. In the event that there's an emergency and we press our e-stop system, it's gonna cut all power to this board and the relay is gonna to click to one other side mm -hmm. and it's gonna give full control back to the driver. We also have another board just for the diagnostics. This is gonna to connect to the ODB2 port. Mm -hmm. And from here, we're gonna get stuff like wheel speed sensors. We're gonna get brake light status. Hopefully from this board, we'll be able to actually control the turn signals, but we're not sure yet. Let's see if you can open a hood. I'm not, a, okay. You know how to? It, well, there's a thing I know, like. Okay, at least you know. There's a thing you gotta. Yeah. You gotta move. There you go. Yo, okay. Oh. 
Now, before we do any of this work on the car, we need to make sure to disconnect all of the batteries. Now, on this car, there are two batteries. There's the main battery, which is over 400 volts, and there's a side battery that this is so volts. scary. We need to disconnect both of these batteries. Wait, you'll see scary. And here oh, I remind God. you, do not try this at home. Okay, so that's the safety switch. So all these electric cars, anything that's orange is do not touch. Oh, okay. So cables that are orange, you'll see them in the front. This is do not touch. Just gotta be really careful with it. So we're gonna pull back that. You make sure you touch the orange then. Yeah, but you know, okay. so we're now isolated. So it cuts two packs of battery in half, uh, and then it cuts off the contactors in the front. So now there's no power at all running through the car. So it just has a safety precaution, because if somebody accidentally touches that, now we're good. Now we didn't finish installing all of the boards and testing everything that day, and Aryan got busy with some other things, so we'll need to revisit this at a later point in part 2 of the series. But we still have a lot of work to do, especially when it comes to setting up all of the sensors, so let's shift our attention to that. Alright, so we've got a car that can move based on our commands, but now we need to give it some eyes by equipping it with sensors. There's this angel debate in the AV world about whether we should be using cameras or LiDARs. Most AV companies today use a combination of these sensors, whereas Tesla is going camera only. The design decisions can be debated extensively, and we'll talk more about this when we get to the software, but for now, we've inherited the sensors from the previous car, which has both LiDARs and cameras. For our LiDAR, we're using a Villadyne VLP32C, which has 32 beams, a horizontal field of view, of 360 degrees and a maximum refresh rate of around 20 hertz. For our camera, we're using a Blackfly Clear S, which has a resolution of like 1920 by 1200. All right, so we've got all of this powerful hardware, but we need to integrate it within our software. And in our case, we're using ROS2, so we need to make sure that all of these cameras and lighters are published into the correct topics in ROS2. And this should be, in theory, very easy. After all, the manufacturers wrote ROS2 wrappers for us, so we just need to use it. But I'm stupid. We cannot get this camera to visualize this like the third the thing heck? in a row. LiDAR is first. It has a fixed IP of 192.168.1.201. So we need to make sure that the computer is on the same subnet of 192.168.1. And we got LiDAR. Okay. Okay, sweet. Perfect. We can see the LiDAR points in ROS2. Cameras come with the HCP, which means that the IP is dynamically configured. Install Spinacre's proprietary SDK to visualize the camera as a sanity check. Auto force the IP of the camera to the current Yo. subnet. How did you do that? Huh? We got the, the IP. We got the camera. We got the camera. We got the camera. Very good news. We got both our lighter and our camera working together simultaneously. So here we got our, our another switch that we got. Finally made it work inside Ross too. Uh, it's five, right? We got the lighter here, and the camera. <laughs> Now that we got our sensors configured, it's time to mount them on the actual car. So as you guys can see, we're mostly done wrapping the car. And now we're going to try and build out the sensor rack. All right, so we finally got all the parts machined. We've got 3030s and a few 4040s. And now it's just about assembling them. It's really easy to assemble these. They're basically like Legos. So we just use angled brackets and some screws and we can screw them on together. Yo, we can do two big ones. Yas queen. Yeah. All right, guys, it's day four of trying to build this stupid sensor rack. I am extremely frustrated at the moment because it's taking us so long to build this thing. But, you know, you just got to keep pushing in those times because you know that in the end, everything will pay off or at least you hope so. Now, in terms of how we're actually going to mount the computer, we quickly built up this uh, compute rack. So as you can see, it's just a bunch of meshes. And the idea is that we're gonna either use screws or zip ties to secure everything in place. All right, here we go, ladies and gentlemen. This is our sensor rack. Um, we don't have the sensors on yet, but we're just gonna put it on and see how it looks. Yo, bring it. All right, uh, we're also gonna do a leveling test. So if we put my phone right here and yes. Yeah. Yes. So, the car just died. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, the car died? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> this is not a good look for us. So what happened was his 12 volt battery would drain extremely fast when the car was not powered on. And so I had to swap this battery by going to the local Kia dealership the next day and bought a new one for like 300 bucks. And then we finally took it out for our first test drive. Can you see if the brake lights are working? Yes. Signals? 
Yes. Left, left, right. right. Yeah. Okay, good. And we have our computer here with the, our janky keyboard, so we're ready to start recording a data set. Yeah. So Orange I would color and then our point Velodyne. Oh. Psych, down. something else went wrong. <laughs> this time it was due to the inverter which was broken. The, F. the inverter is the thing that converts yeah, DC power to AC power, which is what we need off. to power our computer. But um, we inherited that and it wasn't working, so we had to buy another one. Sweet! It works. And again, Aryan had to leave, so the next day, me and Keish drove the car around for our first real data collection. Uh, in three, two, one. Ready to start. Okay. There's a bus, bro. Bus data set, bro. Oh, shit, there's geeks. <laughs> oh, shit. Dude, I, I honestly am so curious how these are going to look on, on the LiDAR. <laughs> Cones. You gotta, you gotta face the geese, bro. What's up, bitch? Bro, the data on this is going to be insane, bro. Yo, it's going to go crazy. Yo, we're going to do autonomous parking here. Autonomous parking. Bro, in one month, man. I believe. Now, of course, the ultimate goal of this project is to build a fully autonomous robot taxi that can drive anyone from point A to point B. For now, I'll just have to drive it myself. So here, I'm picking up my friend and we're driving him to the local bank. So this is the end of part one. In part two of the video, we're actually going to finish implementing the drive by wire system. And we're also gonna be running the actual software stack to do object detection, path planning, and controls. These videos take a super long time to make. So I would really appreciate it if you subscribe and comment if you like the video. And also I just started an Instagram account where I'm gonna be uploading some more tips and tricks based on my experience working in robotics. So if you wanna follow along, make sure you follow that account. Also, shout out to all the sponsors in this video that have made this possible. And thank you to Autonomous for giving me this platform to tell this story. Until then, I'll see you in the next video.